Hey y'all, it's Sunday evening and I want to go show you a couple of fun things I did today in the garden. So here we are and there's my chairs. And here is the Butterfly Haven. But right behind the Butterfly Haven is this little corner where my beloved papaya tree used to reside and <laughs> is no longer. So <laughs> I had some stones left. And I made a little steppy stone walkway back there. And I put one of my blue chairs back there. There are a lot of cool host plants back here that just go unnoticed because it's just been kind of overgrown. So I have a two privet sennas coming up in here. And this one had fallen over and was kind of laying on top of this one. So I've got it propped up with that little clay pot down there. And I trimmed it up so it will be encouraged to grow upright. And then this one I trimmed up also. Look at its blooming. It's so beautiful. Um, so it will be encouraged to grow upright. But down underneath right there is a baby privet sunna coming up which I might dig up and move somewhere else because it is kind of crammed between these two and here is another privet sunna coming up so three babies coming up and my mimosa is slowly working the mimosa is this right right here it gets those little pink puffball flowers on it it's slowly coming in back here and there's some self seeded Mexican sunflowers back here coming up so I cleared all of the things out that weren't supposed to be back here and there is a wild line back there that now I can get access to easily to look for caterpillars and there's my twine vine growing beautifully over the fence and then right below it is another wild line so just to review the privet senna is host to the sulfurs the wild limes are host to the giant swallowtails. And the Mexican sunflowers are just a butterfly favorite. So I've got this fence back here and my husband and I, we try grow a maypop passion vine on this fence and it was just like, no, I'm not having it. <laughs> so I had this teeny tiny little sprout of a woolly dutchman's pipe vine so i just stuck it in the ground back here maybe it will enjoy the fence we'll find out i've got one little bunch of pepperweed back here which i'm gonna leave be for now and there's another little mexican sunflower coming up right in there so it's a magical cute little space and then here's a view from behind. You can see my stumps of my papaya, Mexican sunflowers. And then here's my little chair and the little steps out. All the green over there, that is all tick seed. That has just come up on its own, which is really cool, and I love it. So I'm going to let it be, but I'm not going to let it get overgrown because it can get overgrown. But the cool thing about Tixie is, like, you can literally mow it, and it will come back. It gets beautiful flowers on it, and is extremely, it's beyond pollinator friendly. Pollinators love it. And then right back is my little patch of false nettle which is a host plant to the painted lady who you know i may or may not have visiting my garden again 
And it's been here. This is its third year being here. It dies back and comes back. So I've got this whole little section back here. And now I can easily get back in there and sit in my chair surrounded by some cool host plants and also be able to get back there and water. So I'm kind of excited about it. And when it's shady, just sitting back there, like it's totally hidden away. So it's like a little, little secret garden space. And I love it. Okay, you guys, I want to show you something else. Earlier today, I saw this nibble spot right there. Do you see it? And I looked and looked and looked. Couldn't find a caterpillar. It's like, dang it, something probably ate it. But then just now I found this nibble spot. And so I was like, surely somebody is here. And sure enough, I look. And there's a little baby right there. So, I'm going to pluck this leaf off and move this little baby inside. And let me see, I'm going to tuck it right back here. There we go. And then it can climb off of its leaf onto that milkweed and hopefully live a little bit more safe life. in here with the aphids. Look at that, a chrysalis. A sulfur chrysalis. Is that not fabulous? So, like I want to move it, but I think I'm not going to because it's very well camouflaged. So, but I'm glad to know it's here so I can come and check on it and keep an eye on it. Is that not awesome? And look who's right here. Coming to see. you guys it's Tuesday after work and there is a tiger swallowtail in my garden it looks perfect like it must have recently closed it's gorgeous I just found this little guy, so I'm going to go put him on the privet sunna in the butterfly haven.
Here's another big muncher in here. I expect this one will be pupating soon. Have I told you that I love my butterfly garden? And I'm seeing right now my first polydoma swallowtail is flying right over there. I hope I can get it on video. I'm gonna go try. Y'all, I didn't find it, but I saw it. They're pretty easy to identify because of the fact that they don't actually have the tails. So I'm sure it'll be back, but how exciting. Y'all, I was just over here looking at this tuberosa, Sclepius tuberosa that I bought at the plant sale, the UFIFAS plant sale last weekend. And like I saw nibble marks all over it, particularly this leaf. And look, do you see the extra tiny pair of antenna in the middle? Well, not in the middle, about a third of the way. I think this is a little queen. So I'm going to go put it in the haven and hopefully it will, because this leaf certainly doesn't look that appetizing. <laughs> so maybe I'll have a queen. How cool is that? And probably good that I found it because there's not a whole lot to eat on this plant. Okay, so I tucked the little leaf that's on right down there. And so it can climb on to this milkweed that is currently being enjoyed by a bunch of aphids. <laughs> but there's also a lot of ladybugs in here I'm finding. So those aphids will not be around for long. There's some future ladybugs right there. See, there's another sign of ladybugs to come. So the larval stage looks larger than the adult. Hey y'all, it's Wednesday after work and I just came out to my little secret spot to check on that little um, sulfur chrysalis and um, it had pulled off the one stem. It was kind of hammocked between. So I pulled off the whole leaf and I'm going to put it in the enclosure because it's just a little bit too much in a precarious situation and you know. So it's gone inside now. Okay, so actually I ultimately decided to put it in here in an enclosure just because it is so precariously hung. Like even a strong gust of wind could, I don't know, mess with it. So it's gonna be in an enclosure in here and hopefully we'll see it soon as a beautiful yellow sulfur butterfly. So while I'm at it, I went ahead and brought in this little swamp milkweed plant that was sitting in my garden because it has a lot of eggs on it. You can see a couple there. So why not just bring this whole little thing in and... Let those eggs have a chance to hatch in an enclosure. So there we go. I've got an indoor enclosure again. Woohoo! It kind of makes me feel a little happy. A little sulfur chrysalis and some monarch eggs on a swamp milkweed, Asclepius incarnata, a native Florida milkweed. I love it. Look y'all, my spice bush is putting an outgrowth. And there's a cool dragonfly. The 
Look at the little leaves. Yay! It's really a late bloomer, the spice bush. And I wanted to show you this plant too. Remember how in the last video I showed you that little um, Texas blue something something flower that was just coming up on its own? Well, this is just coming up on its own too. I didn't put this here. I don't even know what it is. So let me go. Let me go get my app on, and uh, we'll see. So my iNaturalist Seek app came up and said that it is Drummond's Phlox, which is native to Texas. Why do I have two random plants coming up in my garden that are native to Texas? And this one says it's a threatened species. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go run the scan again, because maybe it got it wrong. See if it comes up that again. Nope, that's what it was, and I even Googled it to look at, like, other photos of it, and that's it. I have two random native Texas plants coming up in my garden, one of which is threatened. Oh my gosh, there's my tiger swallowtail back. Let's go see. Um, it's not going to be threatened here because it's going to stay in my garden, but isn't that kind of weird? That's kind of weird, but I'll take it. Let's go see the tiger swallowtail. So yeah, we were just in the enclosure. And so here I am outside to the back of it and there's a monarch flying around in there. I'm like, that, it must have been hiding. Can you see it? It's over there back on the Mexican sunflower. So let's go get it. Yeah, it really wants out too. <laughs> I'll wait till it lands and then I'll catch it. It's out again, so yay it. While we're in here, remember the little queen? I came in and I searched and I found her and she definitely is a queen. You can see her little extra tiny set of antenna. And look at this big one just hanging out right with those aphids. It's even got, look, do you see its antenna? It's got an aphid on its antenna. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's hysterical. He doesn't seem to mind. He's enjoying his milkweed. Oh, there's a ladybug. Go eat those aphids, ladybug. You can see there's a cute little golf fritillary right there. And I just saw another one right there. That's a big one. We're going to have another butterfly soon. And my white flower passion vine is covered in little fruits. They're adorable. Look at them all. <laughs> and you know what? That they're in here. Maybe they'll actually grow. I'm guessing these are edible. I mean, I don't know, because it's a different, it's not like the um, Maypop passion vine, but I bet, I bet they are. I would of course do research to find out, but I just think they're so cute. And there's another flower.
And look who's still out here. There's a monarch across on the other side. Do you see it? Oh, and those seeds I scattered in all the pots? It's like, uh, hello. They're all sprouting already. This is my wild lime that's between our two chairs. Oh, <laughs> look at all the seedlings coming up in there. I love it. And guys, I just said to myself, well, you know what? I'm going to go look on that little tiny Asclepius tuberosa, which is also known as butterfly weed that I got at the UFIFAS plant sale. See if maybe there's another little queen caterpillar. And look who I found on another pitiful looking leaf. So... I'm going to move her in onto the same plant with the other one. You know, that's one of the fun things about bringing home plants from native plant places is you might be bringing home some extra guests, which makes it all the better. Here's some of my adorable little liatris bulbs. Remember when I planted those? they're coming up and they're really cute like i love them even though i don't have any flowers yet they definitely have a cuteness factor <laughs> 